All right, so here we have a 2006 Honda Ridgeline. Uh, what we're going to be doing today is, uh, is two things. One is we're going to be doing a timing belt um, and component set, water pump and tensioner and things like that. Uh, but what we're really after is uh, the oil pump, which sits just behind the timing gear. Uh, we have a leak uh, and we have a ticking noise when we first uh, started up in the morning. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start breaking it down. Uh, first thing we'll do is remove the uh, engine cover here. All right, so now we'll get her, up, get her up in the air and remove the tire and the inner fender well. All right, so now we're going to remove the drive belt. Uh, the tensioner pulley is a 14 millimeter. All right, so we're going to go ahead and turn the crankshaft around. This is the top dead mark for the cover. So we're going to line up the crank pulley uh, to that mark. So we have a 19 millimeter. Ah! Our little mark. So this would be our timing. This is our top dead. So we want to line that up. All right, so now that we have our bottom mark, we want to make sure we want to make sure our top is in the right spot. So we should be able to look through this window and see we can see our little mark lined up to our another little mark on our cover. All right, so we are top dead uh, for the motor, so we can proceed in taking all the covers and uh, the front stuff off now. All right, so we're going to remove the tensioner now. Uh, this will be the idler pulley. Uh, we're going to remove the bolt in the center of the idler pulley. All right, so underneath the tensioner, we have a 12 millimeter bolt, and remove that. All right, so here we have the, the center bolt for the idler. This was our tensioner to loosen the belt. This was the 12 millimeter below, mounted below. And then we had, a, you know, there's a retainer. That's why that bolt, that's why that bolt never came back out. It's to kind of hold it in there. And this is our tensioner assembly. All right, so now we want to remove our timing gear covers. Uh, we have a couple 10 millimeter bolts there. and a, Remove this wire hold down.
All right, so once we got the cover off, you can see originally we were looking at this little, um, this little mark here that we had lined up with the cover mark, uh, thinking that was the number one. Actually, the number one is just a little bit higher than that. You can see we have a couple other numbers around. Uh, so the number one is the one we were shooting for. It just happens to be that was where we were at. Um, just want to make sure that before we take it apart that we are on number one. Uh, it, is a, it is pretty hard to see. Um, you know, if you, if you have a phone, you can, you can stick it down in there and take a picture of it. A little handheld mirror, just something uh, to get that angle because the mark is set very high on the uh, sprocket. All right, so now that we have the, the front timing cover uh, of the uh, upper off the sprocket, we're gonna do the exact same thing uh, for the one in the rear. It is a little bit tighter. Um, let's see. I will, I'm gonna go ahead and, this is something you may or may not wanna do. This is the cruise control. Um, I'm gonna go ahead, there's a, there's a 10 millimeter here and a 10 millimeter and a connector. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this just to give myself a little bit more room in that area. Little tab here on the top for the wire. Kind of a channel, I guess you would call it. Pop that off. So the wire was laid inside of this one. Uh, it's kind of hard to see. The other one had. The other one just had a tab on it, and this one fit in that groove. All right, so now we have our upper off. The same width, there's a mark on that one with a, with a number, uh, but we know we got the other two, so we really don't have to reference that one. All right, so now we're uh, back below the vehicle. Uh, we have the uh, harmonic balancer right here, the uh, crank pulley. So there's a special tool uh, that we have to hold the crank in one spot and then we'll go ahead and use the impact to remove the crank bolt. All right, so we're going to try, we tried to air, didn't work. I have the crank pulley with the tool uh, bound up against the frame right here and a bungee tire around it so it doesn't move. And I have a breaker bar uh, with the end of the hydraulic floor jack here. Try to get a lot more leverage on it. All right. All right, so now we have a, our other 10 millimeter bolts here. We'll go ahead and, on our lower cover, we'll go ahead and start taking those off.
All right, so one of the, one of the things to remove the tensioner uh, for the timing belt, uh, we want to use we want to use one of our battery hold downs as a tool. So we're going to go ahead and remove that one of the hold downs. All right, so the next thing we're going to have to do is uh, we're going to be removing the uh, the engine mount uh, here on the side, uh, and and that is mostly to do the to do the water pump, which is located behind it. Uh, if you were just doing a timing belt, you could you could take your floor jack with a block of wood, put it underneath the oil pan, and that would uh, keep the motor from falling down, and you can and you know as some support. But we're going to be removing the oil pan uh, to do the oil pump, so we're going to use another tool. Uh, that will help hold the engine up. We'll go ahead and get this set up. All right, so now we have tension once we remove the motor mount. All right, so now we're going to remove our two 14 millimeter bolts on the top of our motor mount. Now we have our motor mount loose. We just got to remove the lower bracket there. All right, so before we go down below uh, and finish taking off the time belt, we want to just glance one more time. There is another reference. We have, a, we have a line right here on the back of the cover, and then we have a little mark on the, uh, on the sprocket there. We want to make sure that you know, that, that um, cog is lined up right there, that little sprocket. All right, so now we're going to remove uh, the, the lower motor mount. We're going to have three bolts. Uh, we have one here. Uh, then we have another one right here, and then there's a sunken hole uh, with the third one in. Those will be the three uh, bolts we're going to take out right now. Yeah, there's our second one, the third one. I'm going to put my socket in first, and then my ratchet. Uh, that top one is, I'm going to have to take the, I'm going to have to remove the motor mount all the way so I can get to that one. I got to go back up top. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and remove uh, this little ground strap right here, the mount on the top. All right, so I just put the I just put the bolt back in to hold it. I was trying not to remove uh, the whole motor mount, but it doesn't look like I, I can get to that bolt without doing it. And so we have three, we have three uh, motor mount, the, the very bottom of the motor mount. We had three 14, 14 millimeter bolts. Uh, once, once those are 
removed them and we're trying not to pull all this stuff up but we can actually move the mount now All right, so short of wrestling that, that was what we were trying to get to is that bolt right there. So, so we can pull our, we have something else connected here. Look, there's a, there's a 10 millimeter uh, on the top there, 10 millimeter bolt. All right, so this was that bolt uh, that was running into the motor mount. Uh, you've seen how we wrestled. I mean, anything easier than that, you would just have to start removing the computer and the fuse box and laying everything off to the side. You are able to do it uh, with a little bit of wrestling there, but these are the three bolts there that hold the uh, lower mount for the motor mount. All right, so before we go any further, uh, we want to make sure we did look at our mark up top on the uh, camshaft. We want to remove the little guard here. There is a little notch right there and that notch will be lined up with the notch here and that'll tell us that the crankshaft, so we know the cams are correct, the crank is correct. Um, the only time they'd be different is if it skipped timing, um, something like that. So now we can go ahead and remove the belt. This little threaded hole right here, uh, we're, gonna use, uh, we're gonna use our hold down now we're going to screw it in by hand. Uh, what that's going to do is it's going to put pressure on this as our tensioner. It'll start pushing back our hydraulic and that will take uh, tension off the belt. So we'll go ahead and get that going now. All right, so a little bit of a hard reach area, tight. But you can see now we have, now we have the thread all the way in or at least engaged enough that our belt's loose. So we started, it started pushing back the tensioner here to relieve the belt. So that, that will be enough to pull the belt off now. All right, so we'll go ahead and take all that down. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, get the oil drain in here because uh, we're gonna be doing an oil pump uh, next. That's pretty good on the oil. We're gonna end up pulling the we're gonna end up pulling the oil pan off also to get to the pickup uh, tube for the uh, for the oil pump. So go ahead and put this back on. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and take the exhaust down now. Uh, so first, we're gonna remove this uh, cross member here.
All right, so now we're going to remove the oil filter uh, and the filter uh, mounting. Uh, so we'll go ahead and undo this connector here. The oil pressure switch. And now we're going to remove, looks like we got three 12 millimeter bolts there. All right, so one of the other ones, this is the water pump up here. Uh, we're going to be removing the water pump also. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and put the car down uh, and start draining the coolant. Uh, so that way we can start taking apart the front of the engine there. All right, so we're going to go ahead and open up our pet cock. All right, so we're also going to take the radiator cap off. This will help. This will help. Uh, let the coolant out. All right. So now we'll just let this drain. We'll go ahead and get some parts cleaned up. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and remove the oil pump. So the first thing we have to do is uh, remove our idler pulley here. All right. So we're going to go ahead and remove the crank sensor. All right, we're just going to set this off to the side. Right, and our crank sprocket will just pull right off. There's our key. Don't lose your, don't lose your key. All right, so we're going to remove the, uh, the pickup tube here for the oil pump. All right, so now we just want to remove the perimeter bolts. All right, so before I, I'm going to make sure all the, what we look like for bolt size. All right, so it looks like we're all the same sizes here. Maybe this one might be, oh, they're all the same. All right, so we're just going to come in here real nicely. And this is our dipstick. Go ahead 
ahead and pull that back up before we put the new piece on. We got our gasket. This is our old gasket material. We want to go ahead and clean this up. I've already done this on the oil pan uh, and the oil pan mounting surface. So we want to go ahead and clean this up and we're going to spray it with some brake clean, uh, get all the oil off. That way our new RTV uh, will stick nicely. All right, so here we have our old pump, our new pump. Uh, we're just kind of making sure everything is there. So we have some centering dowels. A new one came with them. Uh, we're just trying to make sure that, that everything is uh, the same. All right, so we have to transfer our oil pressure uh, sensor over. Make sure that we have all of our mounting studs are there. All right, so we... The new oil pump does come with a, the, the gasket uh, for the filter housing as it goes back in and a pickup tube gasket. It did not come uh, with the oil filter housing. Uh, I believe that was also leaking too, so I have another one coming. Uh, hopefully it shows up pretty soon. Uh, so everything looks pretty good. All right, so we'll go ahead and remove Our oil pressure, and this is a 15 16 wrench here. All right, so it has a little bit of RTV around the around the base. We'll go ahead and we'll uh, put some more RTV on there when we put the new one in. All right, so I'm just going to use some. Uh, some RTV, just uh, black is the oil resistant. Uh, they make other colors that are sensor safe and all that, but uh, this one is a pretty basic one. We just want to make sure that we don't get anything inside that hole there. That is where this, you know, the, how the sensor works to get the oil. See, it goes right here. All right, so to kind of keep that from popping out, we can just give it a little, a little dab every, that's more or less to help us when we are installing it. All right, so we have Everything cleaned up here. I'm going to go ahead and make sure there was no oil or any residue on there. We'll go ahead and lay our bead down. What we're going to do is we're going to come around this area here. All the way around, we're going to stay just like this around the outside. All right, so we're going to go ahead and put our oil pump back on. All right, we got to make sure we line up. So we have a notch here and a notch here. We want to make sure we line our pump up.
snug these bolts up just a little bit. Uh, we have we want to torque these down. They're going to be 12 newton meters. All right, so we have 12 newton meters. We've installed our new gasket on our pickup tube. We're going to go ahead and uh, put this on now. What I'm going to do is just start all three bolts. All right, and these are also going to be 12 newton meters too. All right, so what we're gonna do now is um, we're gonna go ahead and put the oil pan on. All right, so here we are on the, the service manual for the oil pan. Uh, this would be the front of the engine. Uh, this is towards the transmission. Uh, so what we have here with all the numbers is there is a torque sequence on this. Uh, so we're gonna be skipping around from the center, widening ourselves out, it looks like. Uh, so we want uh, 12 Newton meters is also our torque for this, but we want to do this uh, in about three steps. So we'll do, you know, we'll work our way up uh, to the 12 uh, going around the sequence three times. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get the uh, oil pan RTV'd up and all the bolts in and then we will start with our sequence. Uh, so we get a nice uniform fit uh, for leakage and, and spread of the RTV. All right, so we're going to go ahead and reinstall our oil pan. We got it all cleaned up. We got our surface all cleaned up, oil free. Uh, RTV is already applied uh, to the oil pan. All right, so we're going to go ahead and Gonna go ahead and put these two middle ones in to hold it. We'll go ahead and get the rest of the bolts in after that. We're going to start with uh, six newton meters.
All right, we'll go ahead and put our cover over our flywheel. So now we're going to go ahead and put our exhaust back on. All right, so now we got our exhaust back up. We'll go ahead and put the cross member back on. All right, so now we're going to get back to working on our timing components. Uh, we're going to go after the water pump next, but I need to remove uh, the battery hold down tool we used to loosen the tensioner because uh, we don't need that there anymore. So we'll go ahead and unthread that. All right, so now uh, we're just going to get some stuff out of the way. We're going to remove the old tensioner. Uh, we have, so this is the tensioner bracket with the pulley, and then this is the actual tensioner. Uh, we have brand new ones of those, so we'll go ahead and remove these two 10 millimeters here. Okay, so now we're going to remove the tensioner assembly. This is a 14 millimeter. All right, so now we're going to get to the water pump. So we have a couple 10 millimeter bolts all the way around the perimeter there. All right, so here we have our old water pump, our new water pump. Uh, we just want to make sure that everything uh, looks the same, that our little guide dowels are in. All right, and I'm just going to give this a, a couple little dabs of RTV to hold the gasket in place while we, while we put it in. Alright, so now we'll go ahead and put our new water pump in. All 
All right, so these these will be 12 uh, newton meters. All right, so here we have our new uh, tensioner uh, bracket and pulley. Our bolt, we're going to reuse our, our bolt over here. This would be the only, uh, everything else is, is the same. This, this little center piece here that will come out. We just want to clean it up a little bit uh, and then reinstall it in there. So we'll just hit it with some brake clean. Give it a little dab of oil so it f it's free inside there. All right, so now we want to torque the mounting bolt uh, to 19 uh, foot pounds. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and install our tensioner back. We're going to install our crankshaft sprocket with our key. All right, I'm going to pull this stud out and put the nut on it first. Uh, this should be 33 foot-pounds. Now we're ready to put the belt on. Uh, so right now we're working on the rear camshaft. When we remove the belt, the sprocket did move. Uh, so a 17 millimeter uh, wrench on the sprocket bolt, we were able to turn it back. What we want to do, uh, we're trying to get to, we're trying to get to this mark that's right here. Uh, and then we follow that sprocket mark back to the, uh, there's another mark on the back side of the casing there. So we want to make sure that that is uh, lined up. That would be how the rear sprocket is lined up top dead center. Um, so it, it will spring forward on you and when it moves, it, it's going to move a, almost a quarter of a turn. Uh, so we just have to make sure that that is the area there. So we work our way to the front one and we want to make sure that our notch here and our notch there runs all the way back and that, and that is top dead center for that one. So when we put the belt on, uh, we're going to go one sprocket to the other sprocket going down around the water pump and that is going to be a tight belt. We need to fit that tight. Uh, we have to align all the slack up to the tensioner. Um, so how we put the belt on, we'll, we'll work on it tightly uh, so that all the slack is on the tensioner. So the tensioner will take up the slack uh, and it won't move the timing as slack. We have to remove it, um, you know, manually right now before. Uh, so we'll go ahead and put that belt on tightly now on the top. All right, so now we want to route our belt around the rear. under the water pump. I want to go ahead and make sure it's in the groove. We're going to 
I usually take some paper clip and I clip it so it won't hop. Pull it as, all the slack out and run it around. All right, same thing here. I'm going to take my paper clip and I'm going to clip it on. So I'm going to make sure that we got our belt is pretty good. I'm going to take another look at our marks. All right, so now we're going to go down below uh, and finish lining up the timing belt. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and fully wrap the timing belt around the bottom of the pulley. Bringing it around the tensioner. All right, and around that one. So this is the side we want tight. Slide it in. All right, so all of our tension is here. The rest of the belt is tight. Right. We just want to make sure our, our mark is up. All right, we look good. So now we want to release the tensioner. So what we do is we just pull the pin out of the hydraulic tensioner. Kind of wiggling it back and forth. All right. All right, so then the hydraulics come out and push. Now the belt is tight. All right. All right, so now that we have our timing belt, uh, we want to rotate the engine around. We're going to go two times around on the crank. That will be one time around on the, on the uh, cam sprockets. What we want to do is our tensioner is over here. Uh, we want to make sure all the slack ends up here and it doesn't have one tooth off of the cams. We just want to make sure our timing is right before we go ahead and finish the job. So we'll put the crank pulley bolt back in. And we are rotating, so we're pulling. So it'll all be tight on this side and our tensioner will absorb uh, any slack that's in the belt. All right, so now we are lined back up. Now we'll go check our uh, camshafts, make sure they're in the correct position. All right, so now we've, uh, we've checked our reference marks. Everything is lined up. Uh, so we'll go ahead and put our motor mount in now. Uh, so we want to leave our bolts in our motor mount.
All right, so now we want to put our now we want to put our mount back on the top. Right, then we want to put our motor mount uh, bolts back on the bottom. We have three of them. All right, so now we're going to raise the vehicle back up uh, and put our lower uh, timing belt cover on. All right, so now we'll go ahead and put our covers back on. So we'll go ahead and hook up our sensor right here again. All right, so now we're going to put our filter housing on. Uh, we have our new gasket uh, installed. Okay, so now we want to put our covers back on our camshafts.
All right, so now we're going to put our, our belt tensioner back in. Put our crank pulley on. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and put our oil filter on. So we wanna put a little bit of oil into the filter. Make sure that our seal is nice and lubed. I'll go ahead and put that on now. Now we'll go and put the uh, serpentine belt back on. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and put our serpentine belt back on. All right, now we just want to make sure that all our, see if our belt's not in the groove down on the bottom. So we'll go ahead and adjust that. Okay. All right, so we got our belt on now. Now we'll go ahead and uh, uh, remove our engine uh, holder and uh, go ahead and reinstall our cruise control. All right, so we'll go ahead and we'll put oil in the engine now. All right, so now we're ready to put our, our shield back on. We just want to make sure that we have our pet cock for our radiator uh, closed again. All I have left is to put coolant in it and to, uh, and to prime the system. All right, so now we have uh, oil in the engine. We're ready to, to prime the new oil pump. Uh, so we want, what we want to do is we want to remove um, uh, the ignition fuse so that it doesn't get any spark so we can just crank the engine. All right, so we're underneath on the left side of the dash. Fuse number two is 15. That's going to be right, right here. We'll go ahead and remove that fuse. All right. So then we're just going to go ahead and crank the engine over. Uh, what we're trying to do is prime the oil system so we can avoid a dry start on our new pump. So we don't want to crank more than 15 seconds or more at a time so we don't heat the starter up and All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put our ignition fuse back in. All right, we're gonna go ahead and start the engine now. All right. All right, 
right, so everything went good there. We didn't have any, didn't have any noises uh, from the oil pump and dry run, no knocking. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and put coolant in the engine. Uh, and then we're ready for our test drive. We got our, only thing we're missing is our cover. Oh, we have a hold down. Go ahead and put our hold down back. Okay, so now we'll put some coolant in the engine All right, and we'll start it up and uh, warm it up and then go for the test drive.